Good afternoon, um, my name is Rosarta Krasniki and today I will be presenting a paper Extractive Summarization of Related Bug Fixing Comments in Support of Bug Repair. So, um, what is the problem and the scope of this paper? So when developers investigate a new bug report, they search for similar previously fixed bug reports and discussion threads attached to them. Usually, these discussion threads convey important information about the behavior of the bug, including relevant bug fixing comments. However, with the current trends and the big data and also the social media, these discussion threads become extensively lengthy due, due to also severity of the reported bug. And, um, and the, so this leads to two major components or dimensions of problems, which is time dimension and content dimension. So when we talk about the time dimension, obviously developers are plagued with thousands of bug reports daily, and this becomes time-consuming, inefficient, and ineffective tasks, really, for any developers to keep up. So um, that relates to the time dimension aspect, but the content dimension is, is one that we will be focusing also. And that relates to, um, as number of bugs usually keep increasing, so is the content complexity. Because some of these issue discussion threads become extremely lengthy and complex, and developers and end users may carry different backgrounds, so that adds another complexity. And also lengthy discussions pose substantially challenges to developers who must reason which comments are more relevant. So to um, automate this process, we propose a novel approach uh, called RetroRec that efficiently and effectively recommends and extracts most relevant bug fixing comments from cross-cutting discussion threads of past all bugs uh, retrieved according to query relevance, positive language, and semantic relevance. You may wonder why I use, I'm using these three different techniques. Well, there is a, a reason behind that. So uh, we focused on looking at the very specific characteristics of comments that are more positive. It is my previous knowledge working in industry that sometimes when I looked at the discussions of developers fixing a bug, those comments that were more positive, they seemed to carry more informative information regarding the fix of the bug. So by using the sentiment analysis technique and the text rec model, which is a text rec model is a model that is based on the on finding the semantic relation of keywords. So that is another uh, um, aspect that I, I focus on because sometimes developers use different terms for, uh, to refer to the same thing. So usually those keywords are important to capture and the vector space model is used to mostly to capture the information for uh, relevance from the query input as well. So by combining these three techniques, which I call a combined weighted function, I come up with a solution where uh, I extract all possible uh, related comments to a new bug that needs a fix. And then I put them together more and more in a concise way and summarize it to the way that it's more, it, it has some order for developers to look into. So instead of developers going and looking at thousands of discussion threads and having no clue organization of what they're doing, my tool, RefoRank, is capable of extracting those important comment, comments from different bug reports and providing a possible solution to fix a bug. This is a, per a perfect example where we see a bug ID 34600 has an issue with an alignment uh, in a cell for LibreOffice. And then as you see, comment three is the most high, highly ranked comment. It shows really good instructions of how to handle that problem. Similarly, comment two has the same same um, characteristics and the last two comments provide even a links to previously solved or duplicate reports. So this is also so in general what my technique does. And now I use these three techniques because by using one of them separately, independently, that would have meant that um, one of the characteristics or the strength that one technique has, the other doesn't have. So it was necessary to complement these three types of techniques so that we can get the best out of them. So basically, my the logic or the, the high-level architecture of my design is based on four blocks, so the data collection and pre-processing strategy, 
a step and keyword extraction, which was based on the extracting sentiment analysis dictionary and the text tracking dictionary, and then using those keywords to boost the initial scores obtained from VCM. And finally, the retrieved comments were provided to the user. And this is really how the GUI application is is uh, for, uh, is provided for uh, developers to use it. I wanted to have, provide a, a user-friendly application, so that's why I implemented a GUI-based application. I, provide, I, I did this study with uh, two different studies, in fact. The synthetic study uh, really study carried mostly um, uh, comparing all variations of techniques and also the effect of orthogonality of uh, sentiment analysis and text rank. And then the user study was a more broad and it was conducted with a, with a larger number of, of uh, participants. So the for the metrics used for synthetic studies were ranking, orthogonality, student t-test, and map. Where, and we can see that the R technique, which is in the yellow part uh, down at the bottom, uh, showed so that uh, the mean the mean average was 1.8, meaning and compared to the baseline VCM was 9.1. So that means that the comment that was relevant for, uh, co compared to the baseline, our technique uh, had that comment in the first or second position, while the same comment was found using VCM only at ninth or tenth position. And so this is a, we carried a cross-validation study for the user study experiment. And so we compared only the baseline with our approach because that's the most feasible approach to do the conduct a large study with 20 participants and 40 real bug reports. And we carried these studies with the four different uh, open source systems, medium and large size. We asked the participants to rank the comments, which ones were more relevant and which one were, were not relevant while they were trying to investigate a new bug. Uh, the results show for the user study that our approach, uh, for our approach, uh, users uh, usually uh, ranked comments uh, or the average of ranking was 2.7 compared to 1.4, which means that our approach did better in terms of ranking. The p-value score was very high as well. And also based on Cohen's COPPA and the hypothesis was rejected, uh, the, the, the difference between VCM and um, our approach was significantly large. And so user study, based, we can see that VCM, SR, and TR showed a stronger relation with the content from the clear input and bug description, which means that in all cases, uh, our tool returned uh, at least the, 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 user the users who studied them tool, uh, they reported that comments were relevant with score 3 or 4, which was not the case with the best baseline, uh, which they kind of scored them either 1 or 2. So to conclude, uh, I proposed a new technique by leveraging semantic and natural language information to support bug fixing of new bugs. I used a holistic approach for selecting positive and semantically related comments extracted across cross-cutting discussion threads of past all bugs. I minimized the cost of software development by increasing developer awareness and their ability to understand non-behavioral aspects of the software system effectively, its context, and its relation to domain knowledge. Knowledge. Um, thanks, and I would welcome any of your questions. And this concludes my talk. If you have more questions, I would be more than happy to expand on this problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so if anyone has any uh, questions about the last presentation, please, please post it in oh. the chat. Okay. And I'd be happy to respond as much as I can. Okay, I actually I have a, a small question. Mm -hmm. So in, in this in your work you're focusing exactly on on positive comments. Well, I kind of use a combination of positive comments, also we use text rank algorithm, which normally... Yeah, I, 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 yeah but so my, my question is more like, is it really that important that the comment is positive? I, or, yeah, it could so be... What is the role of sentiment analysis in this case? Okay, so I think it's the role of sentiment analysis is really to try to um, 
narrow down your search space in terms of looking at the most positive comments rather than uh, not positive ones because usually they are irrelevant in most cases and then you can try to kind of go to the back loop of just responding responding and even when people are negative in responses they don't want to even go further you know that's the common way even the people communicate and so the more positive you are in your responses probably the more people will, will understand and want to talk to you or even want to discuss something further. And so I think that was the, the main goal because sometimes in those comments, someone will say, well, I think I saw that the, the correct answer that, or something you're looking for fixing this book, go to this patch. And then they give you some directions. Maybe the comments will not fully give you all the gu guidelines. Oh, sometimes it would because it would say, Listen, if I have, uh, there was a particular book that I was using for uh, the long paper. Uh, there was an, an, uh, an error, something in the, in the Excel sheet or something. And then I was able, or the algorithm, not me, the algorithm was able to retrieve the comments where it would say exactly the instructions, how to even reproduce the solution for that book. Of course, that will not happen to every case, but it's possible even in the best scenario to get those kind of instructions exactly how to solve a particular bug. Because the algorithm that I was using, it was extracting different comments from different discussions, threads of all kinds of, of, of like like bug, bugs that have been fixed. So um, even to manually do that is impossible. So I think that really helped to narrow down even the search, search the time, I mean the search space, but also being able to at least get some more relevant comments rather than just, you know, going and looking at 100 comments. So I think that was the purpose. So looking at more positive comments, there is a likelihood that there will be more uh, reliable comments from users or end users or even developers that can help anyone or guide them to solve the bug. But it will not, not let's say, the, it could, you could look at it as an, in Stack Overflow. It's another example. Not every comment is useful, but sometimes when people rate it, then they become top at the top and then someone uses them as a way to solve their bug and or whatever they're doing. And they not necessarily may give you all the full answer to your solution, but you can use a part of code to fix your own code. Something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah th thank you for your answer. Actually, we only have one minute, but we have two questions. So, or even three questions. So probably you will not be able to answer all of them. So I suggest that after that, we may continue in the separate chat. Okay. So the, the first question is, could you please comment on whether abstractive summarization would be a complement to your extractive approach? in helping developers understand better the bug fixing comments? Abstractive summarization? Okay, so um, it, I think that's another way probably to go around that. Um, uh, so I think the way I am, no, I'm not doing like really summarization per se in this case because I'm not summarizing the discussions. What I am doing is, is extracting certain comments from different places in space and putting it together in a more cohesive way to summarize something, but without, uh, while preserving the comment as is. Well, with the abstract,